Video game collecting is something I obviously do. I have a lot of video games, probably too many video games, but really you can never have too many video games. I like collecting games. It's a fun thing for me, and I definitely don't have every game I want. There are tons of games out there that you know could be super rare, could be super expensive, could just be cheap that I never come across that I have not added to my collection yet. And one of my Patreon backers named Steve is in the reward tier where you can pick what sort of video I do for the month. And Steve wanted me to talk about games that I want in my collection that for whatever reason I don't own, whether they're rare, expensive, or just kind of obscure under the radar games. Now, before I get into this video, Wood did a pretty similar video about a month or two ago about this and some of you guys weren't too nice to him about it we don't make these sort of videos so that we say oh you know please send us these games we can't afford them please no it's just a fun topic to talk about like there's obviously games there's obviously stuff everyone wants in life that they just don't have and maybe one day they'll get it maybe one day they won't but it's fun to talk about it's fun to have dreams and aspirations and things so with that being said let's talk about some games that i want to add to my collection but for whatever reason i haven't yet The first game I want to talk about is a game that I actually had the opportunity to buy pretty recently at the Southeast Game Exchange. If you did not see my video on the Southeast Game Exchange, make sure you guys check that out. It was an awesome time. Scott Squatch and I had a total blast there. I cannot wait for next year. But one of the things uh, that was going on there was there was a lot of cheap games. But, you know, the heavy hitters were still pretty much the heavy hitters. And I spied with my little blue eyes. Dragon Force on the Sega Saturn. Now, if you're not familiar with Dragon Force, it is a strategic RPG game that released sort of late in the Sega Saturn's life cycle that has always pretty much kept a value and it's always been pretty expensive. I've seen it at cons from anywhere from $130 to $150. Same with sort of eBay stuff. And I remember seeing this game in our local game store when I was like in eighth grade and me and my buddy were really big into RPGs at that time. We we're playing like Cartilla and Brigandine and I actually had Shining Force 3 on the Saturn. So Dragon Force just really resonated with us. It looked so cool, you know, 100 characters on screen and these huge epic battles and stuff. And like I said, I saw the game at Southeast Game Exchange but it did not have a price sticker on it. So I figured in my head, well, yeah, it's probably $130, $150. That's a little more than I wanna spend at this convention. Um, I'm gonna have to pass on it. But I, I didn't ask how much it was. And actually, Game Glyph was talking to me before um, we were about to do their panel. And he was like, yeah, I saw that copy of Dragon Force. He's only asking $100 for it. $100 for a complete in box, really crispy Dragon Force. And I was like, go, go, go. And I just started running and I ran over to his booth and it had sold. So instead of making this video talking about Dragon Force, I, I could be playing Dragon Force right now on the Saturn. Maybe, maybe even streaming it. Would only been a hundred bucks. I could afford a hundred bucks, but you know, I'm not mad about the situation. It's not something that's keeping me up at night. It's not something that I've been thinking about over and over again. And this has been eating away at me that I could have had the game for just a hundred dollars, which is definitely, you know, I'm willing to spend a hundred dollars on that game. No, no, that's cool. I'm not, I'm not mad or anything. Son of a bitch! The next game on my list of games that I want but do not own is an NES classic released late in the system's life cycle. So it's one of those expensive games. No, not Lil Samson. Lil Samson isn't on this list. I have really no desire to own that game. It's just really expensive. But Mighty Final Fight. I love the Final Fight series and Mighty Final Fight is probably, I would say probably the best beat em up on the system. The, uh, the sprites are kind of cartoony looking, but the gameplay is awesome and there's different characters to select from and they all play differently. And it's just such a fun game. I've played it on um, you know different virtual consoles and whatnot. Of course, I've emulated the game and played it, but I do not own the cartridge. The cartridge goes for you know about $180 plus right now. And that's just way too much money for me to spend on a single game, but it is something, you know, you know, once again, like Dragon Force, if I found it for, you know, $100, maybe $120, maybe I would pull the trigger on it because it's definitely an awesome game. It's a game that I would play and get a lot of value out of on, you know, either my NES or various clone consoles that I cover on this channel. So Mighty Final Fight, definitely a game I want to add to my collection one day. One thing about survival horror games is they seem to go up in price after the fact that they're released. There's games on the PS2, some of the most expensive PS2 games are actually survival horror games. And this game is actually a pretty pricey survival horror game, although it's not in that upper tier. It's definitely something that I could hop on eBay and buy 
but I don't know. I just rather would find it in the wild, maybe be able to trade something or barter a little bit. And that is Obscure on the PS2. Now, I love Obscure. I remember going to a GameStop with my buddy and we saw Obscure and we had never heard of it before. And we actually just bought it on a whim. I want to say it was like 20 bucks when it originally released. And that's why we bought it. And we had such a blast with it. It's definitely that old school survival horror style. Um, it plays out sort of like a high school horror movie. You're in a high school that's being overrun with all these weird creatures. It's a co-op experience and it's just a really fun game. Definitely a little bit on the cheesy side in terms of story and whatnot, but I like that. It felt like a 90s, you know, early 2000s horror movie. And those are some of my favorite movies. They did release a sequel called Obscure the Aftermath that released on the Wii, PS2, and uh, PlayStation Portable, I believe. And that's a really fun game too. I love the sequel. I played it on the Wii with my buddy when it came out. I still own that, but I would love to have the original. It's definitely starting to get up there in price. With disc-based systems, I do like to go for complete in box, at least box and disc. And it's about $60 plus right now. So a little bit pricey, but definitely a game I'm always on the lookout for. Definitely a game I would love to add to the collection because I had a blast playing it back in the day. Let's talk about Jag, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Super Burnout on the Atari Jaguar is a game that I really, really want. It is a racing game, a motorcycle racing game, sort of like Super Hang On, you know, all those motorcycle racing games, but it runs really well on the Jaguar. 60 frames per second, it's a really fast racing game, and it just looks really cool. It looks like something that I would have a lot of fun with. It's not terribly expensive, about $45, but once again, it's just one of those things where if I saw it out in the wild or even at a store or a convention, I would probably pull the trigger on it, but you know, when I'm on eBay, I'm not really looking for specific titles, I'm more just looking for something cheap that I want to add to the collection or something that I feel is priced too low that you know someone just didn't know about. So Super Hang On or Super Burnout, excuse me, is a game that I really want. I like those arcade style racing games. I think I would have a lot of fun with that game. Maybe one day I'll be able to find a decent copy in the wild and uh, be able to add that to my collection. Sticking with Atari consoles, we have a 7800 game that I do not own. Honestly, the 7800 is a pretty cool system. I once did a video on it because I was a complete noob to it, and I had a lot of fun with it. It's a really interesting system, definitely uh, you know, a product of the times, but there's some really decent titles on the system. And one of the titles that I don't own, that I do want on the system, is Ninja Golf. Now, Ninja Golf goes for about $60, and it's a really freaking weird game. It definitely got some notoriety um, when James and Mike did a video on it over on Cinemassacre. Pretty much that was my awareness of the game because the 7800 wasn't a game, a system I was familiar with. And when I saw this Ninja Golf game, I was like, this is bizarre, but I, I kind of want to play it now. And now that time has gone on, the game has hit about $60. And for a 7800 game, that's just more than I'm willing to pay. Probably about half that would be in my sort of ballpark. If I saw it at a convention, I might try to you know, talk them down a little bit or something. But Ninja Golf, it's a cool looking game. It's definitely very unique, definitely probably the most unique game on the 7800 and a game that I will own one day. Just, it just comes down to the price. I gotta get it for a good price. All right, let's get back into a heavy hitter here. This is a Super Nintendo title. It goes for about $180 to $200, but it's such a unique game. And that is Evo The Search for Eden. It's basically like Evolution the video game. Like you start out as like this little spore thing and then you just progress through life. And it, it's, it's really bizarre. I played it via emulation and I had a blast playing it. It was just such a fun, unique game. There's never been a game like it. There never will be another game like it, which is a shame because I would love to see this sort of in a, on a modern platform, you know, redone with modern visuals and stuff because what's there is really interesting. It's definitely not one of the best games on the Super Nintendo, but it is a very good game. The price definitely holds me back, $180 for a very unique game and it's sort of a rare game. Uh, you know, will I ever get it? Maybe one day, but it's definitely a game I always sort of keep an eye out for. I'm always checking prices on it because it's a game I would love to have and you know, just sit down with my Super Nintendo on my CRT TV and experience it sort of the way it was meant to be experienced. So Evo, The Search for Eden, one of the most unique RPG games with action elements in it and definitely a game that I'm always on the lookout for. This next game isn't even really a good game. It's only like $25 complete, but once again, it's just one of those things where I don't 
just want to buy it on eBay. I would rather find it at a con for 20 bucks and maybe talk them down to 15 or maybe see it for 25 and talk them down to 20 or see it at my local retro store, at a retro store, a flea market, anywhere. And that is Resident Evil Survivor. Now this was an interesting game on the PlayStation 1 that was from a first person perspective that had a on a screen reticule. So you would aim sort of in real time. And it's not a great game. I remember renting it and playing it with my buddy, but we had a good time. I love the old school Resident Evil universe. I love all of the characters from it. I love all of the enemies from it. I definitely grew up playing Resident Evil games. And this game wasn't a great game, but it was fun. It was serviceable. And you know, the graphics weren't that great, but I was always interested sort of in the story, where it was going. It was one of the first games that was a side shoot for the Resident Evil series, sort of a side quest, if you will. And it was a fun game. It's not, you know, a super expensive game. It's not a game that costs a lot of money. Um, 25 bucks is for a complete copy. Once again, that is a disc game. So I would like a complete copy of that whenever I find one. So hopefully, you know, at one of these upcoming cons I'm doing, I'll be able to stumble across that game. And when I do, I will pick it up and I'll scratch that off my list. But for now, Resident Evil Survivor is on the list. Before we get into the grand finale, I want to hit you guys with two Genesis games that I would love to come across. Loose is fine for these because it's a cart game. I'm not really big on uh, box cart games, although Genesis, I do tend to like the boxes, but whatever. Uh, the first game is, of course, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist. This is essentially Turtles in Time, sort of redone for the Genesis with some additional levels and additional stuff in it. It's a game that I've never really played, honestly. I played you know, it via emulation a couple times, but I never really sunk my teeth into it. It's about $40 for a loose copy. I'll probably find one one day and end up picking it up, but Hyperstone Heist is a game that I'm interested in. And another Genesis game would be Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I am a big fan of Michael Jackson. I think he was one of the greatest artists of all time and the game was phenomenal the game was awesome I love the soundtrack I love the graphics I love the little intricacies you know the dancing stuff the dancing uh, special moves and whatnot I have played it a million times via emulation but once again it's just another cartridge that I would like to add to my collection have something physical in my hand and that like turtles uh, like hyperstone heist excuse me is a $40 game so both of those games are definitely very attainable both of those games are definitely games that I could purchase right now off eBay hopefully I find them at an upcoming con so that way I can support the vendor and get this game that I want. So Hyperstone Heist, Moonwalker, two quick Genesis games I'm definitely on the lookout for. And the final game, the creme de la creme, the crown jewel, the crown jewel of what would be in my collection. Panzer Dragoon Saga. Come on, people. Come on, people. I like Saturn. Panzer Dragoon Saga is an epic action RPG with giant dragon beasts that fly through the sky and it's awesome and it's expensive and it keeps going up and 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 up it's like $700 now for a complete copy it's absolutely ridiculous and it's by far the most expensive game that I want you know I don't care about Lil Samson I don't care about a lot of these you know uh not for resale cards and competition cards I don't care about those because I wouldn't really play them Panzer Dragoon Saga is a game that I would play over and over and over and over and over again because it looks like an awesome game. And I've played it a little bit via emulation and I want more. I want to sit down with my Saturn, with my glorious S-Video cables on my CRT TV and play this game the way it is meant to be played. But it is too damn expensive. Too damn expensive. So out of everything on this list, that's probably the one game I will never have in my collection. Honestly, if you had to say, well, what would you pay for it? $350 for a complete in box copy. That is as high as I would go. I could I, I would feel comfortable with that, and that's still entirely too expensive. And you're probably $350, you piece of shit. No, no. But I would totally do it. And I would, you know, I would enjoy it. You know, and worst case, if for some reason I got tired of it, I would just sell it. But Panzer Dragon Saga, definitely the biggest game, definitely the most expensive game I want, and a game that maybe one day I'll own, but probably not. And there you have it. There is my list of games that are either rare, expensive, obscure, or whatever that I just don't own. Thank you, Steve, for choosing this topic for me. I had fun doing this. It was fun to sit down and think, you know, look through my games and think, well, what games do I want that I don't have? And, you know, I came up with a decent variety, I think. Let me know some games that you don't own that you would like to own in the comments section down below. And thank you for checking out this video. We are dangerously close to closing in on 50,000 subscribers. There is a huge giveaway when we hit 50,000 subscribers. I'm even thinking of doing a game room tour for 50,000 subscribers. So a game room tour, a giveaway. Why am I not at 50K already? 
I'm just playing with you guys. 50K, you know, is coming up though, and it's seriously mind blowing. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Thank you, Steve, for this question. Uh, like I said, this is a Patreon perk. If you want to check out my Patreon, the info is in the description box and at the end card at the end of the video. If you don't want to, that's fine. You're not going to break my heart. Thank you for watching the videos, anyways, and I will catch you guys next time. Later. Take it